What if we told you that you could get people to say and do things that they didn't agree with? Sounds good. To agree to things that they knew were wrong. Like it. And in the process, lower the quality of their lives and the lives of others around them, sometimes even catastrophically so. All right, now you got me. It sounds terrifying, doesn't it? But the fact of the matter is, it happens every day. In fact, you do it every day, and you're subject to it every day. The best way to understand a phenomenon like this is to try to recreate it in a laboratory. What we're about to show you is a very simple experiment inspired by renowned social psychologist Solomon Ash, and it will reveal this shockingly common form of mind control. We sat seven teenagers around a table and asked each in turn to answer a very simple question. Which of the three lines does this object match in length? Now, it was obviously line C. Now, here's the intervention, the trick we're testing with this experiment. The first teenagers are Confederates. They're in on it. And they were instructed to give the wrong answer, A. This answer was so obviously wrong. But what would the actual person who was not in on it the one the experiment was designed to observe, what would they say? Any questions? A. 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 He gave the obviously wrong answer. <laughs> what a pushover. Well, a pushover, but in good company. The surprise here is he's not the exception. He's the rule. A. A. About two-thirds of any group, independent of age, goes along. Regardless of gender, background, most of us are suckers. Social influence is a potent power. So here we have a textbook example of this deceptively simple form of mind control. We got these teenagers to consciously ignore what they knew to be right. And we could have gotten two-thirds of you, remember. So don't think you're above it. Oh, <laughs> not at all. In real life, think of how many smart people have made stupid decisions because social forces overwhelm their better judgment. There are benefits to following the crowd. Relying on group wisdom is cognitively efficient. And often cognitively superior. We are social learners and derive great benefit by leaning on the judgment of others. Even when a subject spoke their mind, it was torture to do it. Watch this girl's face. Social influence is a powerful thing. See? So the question becomes, can we get more of the benefits and fewer of the costs? What if we replayed the same scenario with the teenagers and added one person, just one, who expresses polite doubt to the crowd? I, I guess I saw it different because it looks like it was seeing me. Maybe I saw it differently, but I think it's seeing um, I might see it differently, but I think it's C. C. What about you? C. 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 Astounding! 95% now express their true opinions. So here's some BS you can use. What's the point here? It's the power of the one. We have an innate fear of being shunned by valued groups. When you feel like you're the odd person out, don't stifle your concerns. Simply express them respectfully. It turns out this small dissent can provide powerful permission to the silent concerns of others. Yes, you don't have to risk being an outcast in order to test your concern. You don't have to scream and yell. You don't have to call others names. The quiet, polite expression of doubt can turn the rest of the group from zombies into thinkers. I'm David Maxfield. And I'm Joseph Grenny. And that's all the BS for today. Subscribe to our channel and sharpen your behavioral science skills with our latest videos and updates. Click here to subscribe, where we always promise to share some BS you can use. What are the advantages of, uh, of working as a group? First of all, I think we're, we're social animals, and we're just more comfortable when we bounce ideas off of each other. But I think it's also the diversity of knowledge and experience that everybody brings. Yeah, it seems to me like one of the critical factors is creating a group where dissent is a norm uh, and conformity isn't necessarily the highest value.